Hi, I'm Sharon from Sharon's Natural Gardens. Welcome to my garden. I have uh, grown up on a farm locally and raised rabbits when I was a child. I'm an, in 4-H and we raised rabbits for our family here for many years. And now, um, years later, I have not raised them and I was trying to raise them for meat as an alternative to the industrial meat system um, out there. I wanted to raise really clean meat and also save money by uh, growing much of the food myself. And um, so I could not find any place to have them processed locally. Uh, we live in Delaware and down here I could not find any place. In fact, it was not, rabbit meat was not even available in any stores or butcher shops or anything. I did find one butcher shop that sold rabbit meat from China. So um, in my effort to learn how to do the butchering myself, um, I decided to hold a workshop. And uh, we have shown a little bit about how I raise the rabbits. They're outdoors. They eat all sorts of wild herbs and grasses and greens. And we feed them um, some commercial pellets, but we also feed them um, some organic uh, GMO-free uh, pellets and would like to switch them entirely to an organic diet as we can afford to. Um, Anyway, we, we invited, I invited uh, my blacksmith who trims my horse's feet, his name is Clint Glenn, uh, to the workshop to show us how he, um, you know, processes the rabbits because there's many different ways of doing it and he grew up in Missouri and farmed with horses and don't, knows how a lot about the old school ways. So we also had a woman named Julie Woodhouse who is from uh, Philadelphia and works for Blue Marble Solutions and works with uh, urban people trying to help them uh, learn to garden and learn to raise their own chickens and their own rabbit and be more self-sufficient and uh, self-sustaining and healthier. Uh, so she came down and she also participated in the workshop showing uh, what she does. And then we also um, covered a little bit about using the entire animal and um, and tanning the hides to use all of it because we raised silver fox rabbit which is a meat fur rabbit and I like the idea of tanning the hides and then doing some sort of value added thing with the hides maybe make a blanket maybe make a coat um, we sent some off to a fellow named Phil Mills down in Alabama who does um, natural Native American uh, tanning of all sorts of different hides. So um, he has a website called, or a Facebook page called Mountain Man Ways. So um, I hope you enjoy the workshop and I hope you'll visit us and um, explore uh, sustainable homesteading. Valerie, if you want to take a picture of her, is, is Hildy. She's the pedigreed mama. She's the first doe in the first pages. I was just wondering why this one had different colors. Is it because it's a baby growing out? I don't know. Mine don't have different colors. Hi, sweetie. No, you're being friendly. <laughs> They're not great. They do. They should. They should. Yeah, yeah. They're silver fox. All the, all the, Is all the white. A silver fox. It's a, it's a breed. Yeah. yeah. It's Unusual. Like yeah, it's like that. Most of them are either black or they're silver, and and they're not these these two tone males. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It is interesting. Um, I'm not sure How whether is this, this one. These are one of the ones we're butchering. Okay. Um, they're like at least uh, four months, maybe five months. 
Um, I want to show you these down here. Had babies because they were fighting. They were all together in the cage down there. Like I have the other ones. I left them in there too long. Mm -hmm. And they started fighting, so we separated them and scrambled to make cages. And then she had these two babies. Teenage mom, but they're so gentle. I mean, look at this one. This one is like the gentlest little thing. I mean, it just sort of hangs out. Its personality is just so cool. I mean, I, I usually they're usually scared to death. Mm -hmm. But this one is like, I'm cool with it. <laughs> it's amazing. So, I like the way this design is. Oh, so yeah, you can feed them from the outside. Well, I, you can do that, but you can also, it's snake proof. You know, there's no place for them to get in there. It's really, really tight. Well, I don't know, maybe not that one. <laughs> Box works. It should have been wire uh, because they poop in here and it's hard to clean. So in between, um, when, when I clean the cages, I scrub them all out really good and air dry them. And before that, I put another dough back in here, you know. But in the future, I would put wire, not plywood, mm -hmm. on the bottom. Right. It does make it a little warmer in the winter. Mm -hmm. Which I like better because you can hang the, hang the hay baskets. I also put these tiles in there so they can sit on them and rest. And they usually have a bathroom corner that, you know, that they usually go on. And I feed them fresh. Um, honeysuckle and grasses and stuff like that and I try to give them plenty of water so that they don't run out of water and I usually check the water twice a day but the, the tile is really nice and you can see they like to sit on it I think it's cooler and they keep their feet off of the wire and off the poop it helps them keep cleaner and bunnies are really meticulously clean they do not like to be wet or dirty mm -hmm. this uh, spoiled hay for mulch out in my garden for my berries. Okay, that's good there. Um, has, has Kim un unhooked a little bit, mm -hmm. and it was it was over a low spot, and that's how the fox got in there. Right. And evidently, the rabbits got so freaked out that they went out the same hole as the fox. So, but I did catch them all. You know, the one got hurt. But this is just really cool because you can move this around. So that's what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put wire around this entire area and plant better grass than just these weeds. Although they love the wild violets and mm -hmm. the, the um, you know, the, the yellow dock and the dandelion and, you know, so I'm probably going to just sprinkle some more grass seed and clover. And is, then, this, is this mallow? No, that's, that's wild violet. That's wild violet? Very, oh, good, okay. very good for the rabbits, too. Oh, okay. So they have a little nest uh, in there for them to get out of the rain. Um, I need to drill some holes in the bottom so it can drain. And then I have that pole that I just stick up there to keep, keep the little, the, keep, keep them shaded. Mm. But it, it works really well and one person can move it. But, um, but I... There's also issues with so being on the soil. You don't even want to pull up things with dirt on the grasses because you get that into their gut system and that can hurt them. They can get a tablespoon of salt, a couple of gallons of water, and you put the meat in there to soak. And you can, what, soak it for you can actually put it in the refrigerator too, can't you? Overnight or something? Yeah. 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 So, it's all brine. It, it kills the bacteria and it helps, uh, it helps um, draw the blood out of the rabbit. And the uh, yep. ear and, and the you, eye. You hold her. You hold okay. her. I'm not holding her. I'm I mean, I don't, do you have it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You see how it's shaking and stuff? It means it worked.
and that's what it's supposed to do. There, she's done. Whoop. Yep. She may jerk a little bit. So what we want to do when I hang her up, I want to test, I'm going to touch her eye with my finger. If there's any reaction, Here, get this, then get this part done. Now, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just on you touch let her, her eye. bleed. Yeah, we're going to let her bleed, but I want to just touch her eye. There's no reaction whatsoever, so we know she's gone. Okay? Cut the jugular. You ready? I'm cutting a circle around. We should each that in a separate bucket with a very sharp knife, making sure you don't cut your own finger off. Yeah. <laughs> then we start right here where I cut that circle. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to... Here, come on. I'm going to do something here. Do I try this? So this thing is going to hang. You go right down too by that. Yeah. Try to go right by the vent. Do you need a um, towel or something? Wipe your knife off with. So that bunny is not nearly as um, old as the other ones she did before. So they should be easy How to skin. How old is it? I think it's like maybe four months, five months at the most. I'll have to go look in the house. I wrote down the date. Let me go do that actually. Oops, see, so you're, you're, you didn't get it. Oh, there's some of no. it you missed. Now it pulls away pretty yeah. easily. Yeah, their skin is very, very thin. But the, yeah. there's, that's why we wait and, and have them get larger. Um, because these probably will not weigh as much as the ones that um, we're eating for dinner later. They weighed four and a half to five pounds dressed out. So, yeah, you want to make sure you cut then the tail off without cutting the, um, uh, yeah. the poo area. There. There you go. Let me see. Let me see if I can get in there and see that. Okay. Her tender. Her hide's awful tender. Is it a boy or a girl? I think it's a boy, but I'm not too sure. I don't see any testes. Peels off like a glove. Definitely not as these are more. Do you like, want? Do you want scissors? More like a fryer. Yeah. I'll go get those. No, uh, I have scissors right here. Okay. I, mean, I got always cut those joints at the bottom because they're easier to cut than. And then you can just cut the head off. Well, he oh, you take the skin off the head? He actually... Um, we did the mother. Yep. Oh, okay. Find his ear there and cut behind that. And I didn't do a very good job on that one. I'm going to go find out when... And get a scale so we can weigh them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go find out when, um, when they were born. Okay. And the blood you see is uh, where we did the bolt gun. Yeah, see right there you can see where, where it hit. You shoot all livestock there. I butchered it in the country all the time at home. And a cow or anything, you shoot them there in the brain, they're done for. It. With a 22. I can smell the blood a lot. <laughs> smell that metallic kind of smell. Oh, she, oh she here, let me, in this bucket here. Oh, sorry. Oh, I see. You just put the skin oh, in there. Yeah. And now, she wants here, you gotta to... try to be careful. There. 
then get a hold of that and I'm gonna switch out buckets. She wants the. No, I do it this way. I don't know how everybody else does it. You very seldom ever get a gut that way. And that big yellow thing is the bladder. That's the bladder. The digestive tract with the little. Oh, here's your liver. The heart and liver she wants. Yeah. And there's the kidneys. You want them? Yeah. You can just put them all in here. I'll separate them. All right. Yeah. Now. We're going to get the lung. Clint, I would like to thank you for coming. Oh, okay. And helping. Showing us the old school. <laughs> Is this the way you do it? No. No. I do it this ain't the way you do it? No. I do it from the top down. Well, the bottom down. Well, that's what he did. No, he went up. Oh, from, I, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I also, I also do the, it's a little bit different, no big deal. You don't want to add it. There. No. You got the heart, okay. I'll take the, the I'll take that out and for and you. And make sure the gall, gallbladder gets Yeah, yeah. And make sure you get that. that yeah, well, gallery. right now. Yeah. So that's the skull, and then that's the head, you, keeping the heart. But this make is sure the heart. I got to take the spleen out of that liver yet. Yeah. yeah, and then the spleen. That's the gallbladder, right? Yeah. This is the liver, and that's, that's the, the gallbladder. gallbladder. Oh, you right see, it's here. green. It has the bile in it. And it's very important that that doesn't get broken. That'll ruin the meat if you if you cut it, if you spill it there. Right in here. Yeah, put that in the <laughs> tub. And there's the hide. Correct? Yep. yep. You want to turn that right side out? Or the, actually, if you leave them all in, inside out, then you, the it you stays even cleaner. Yeah. Like like this, right? Yeah. yeah. So you yeah, just yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. I forgot the scale. They, by the way, they were born February 12th, and they were weaned April 10th. So let's see, May 10th, June 10th. So they're um, February 12th, April, May, June. What are you doing here, Julie? I'm going to take the brain out. February 12th. But I also am going to take the tongue. February, I'll give that to my. February, May. Let's see. Um, February. Let me go get the. Uh, let me go get the scale. Actually, I've never actually taken the brain out, but we'll try it. Uh, uh, do you want a spoon for the brain? They had a little spoon here before. Okay. I know somebody who the kids loved fried rabbit tongue and fried um, duck tongue. So I figured the dogs will probably like it. It's a muscle. I should probably come through the other way. Cheers. that'll cut it off. I don't think it'll cut the skull. No, it's not going to cut this Where well, we use that thing. You want to use the cleaver? I've never tried to retrieve the brain. Oh, look, it's working. The old cat wanting to bite, is she? I thought I heard her meow. I don't know where she is. Yeah. A little spoon. <laughs> Careful. There you go. Like they got enough brain in there, but they're supposedly as the story goes, there's enough brains in every animal to pan its hide. Where'd you? So these are approximately four and a half months old. 
So these are fryers. So what is it about the brain that is... It's all fat. It's, it's so got some kind of acid in there. And, and also tannic acid, yes. Well, it's yeah. got whatever chemical is needed to tan the hide of the same animal that it came from. That's yeah. the way it's I It's tannic, tannic acid. That's what tanning yeah. comes from, tannic. But I mean, there's all kinds of tannic acid. There's old trees have tannins, but yeah. it's not the same as, oh, as the Here, tannins in, in a brain. The Oh, no. Yeah. So you can keep those for your dog. Oh, yeah, I'm going I'm to see what it's like because I know somebody who actually likes um, the, head. the tongue. Oh, well, they the make tongue. soup out of the tongue, oh. uh, the head. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, why waste anything? Oh, absolutely. Head cheese. Do they have head cheese? <laughs> this country? Well, you know, I remember butchering cows and pigs um, with my German Swiss immigrant grandparents, and it was a family affair. It took all day long. Let's see. Oh yeah. We yeah. put a, a good look at that tongue, Julie. So this is what the tongue looks see. like. There it is. And this is the underside. Okay. Very good. It's a nice is. little Very piece good. of meat. Very good. Somebody Come wrote. I have a three-acre farm in Preston, Maryland. I've been farming for about five years and we've never had animals on the farm um, just based on time and just systems on the farm. We don't own the land. But in the future, this is something that I definitely want to have incorporated in my system. So I came here because I learned about it a couple of days ago and flagged it as something that was really interesting because, um, yeah, I want to see how to process rabbits. <laughs> We'll start out with uh, what can you do with rabbit fur, <laughs> and why? Oh, I didn't get the why? Uh, why have the fur? Well, if you're going to eat the rabbit meat, it's a good idea to, you know, yeah. Yeah. use everything as everything you On can. The other ones? Yeah. So this is a Christian Dior. It might be a real one. It might be a knockoff. I have no idea. Still got the tag on it. Anyway, so that's one example. I'm going to make hats or or a jacket, or or a blanket, or I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to tan them and use them for something. Me? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, here are the two that from my last batch of rabbits that I am attempting to learn to tan, tan on. That's the, the side that is not finished yet, and that's the other side. And these three are from the same litter that I sent away to be professionally tanned by a Native American man. He's, um, his name is Phil Mills, and he's a uh, uh, cross, I guess, between, uh, I believe he's Cherokee and black. And he's from um, Alabama, and he has a website called Mountain Man Ways, and he teaches tanning and trapping and all sorts of, uh, you know, ancient skills. So these are the ones he did, and so he's been kind of mentoring me, teaching me how to try to do it myself. And these have been uh, brain tanned and um, smoked over a fire. Um, and these are hit the three that he did. And I, I got, uh, he charged me $25 a piece to do these. So before you even make them into anything, you've already got an investment yeah. of $25 a piece, not counting the cost of the hide. If, it, if that's any worth. Anyway, so that's that. And significant. This one's all you need to know on how to tan and sew your rabbit furs at home by Roberta Stark with a pullout patterns for a fur purse and pillow. And it is this actually is autographed to me the from the author to Sharon. Happy tanning. The Let me get a close-up of that. And she here is a jacket, a coat that she made with rabbit furs. Can you see it? We met her at the Oregon State Fair when Dylan was an infant. Well, he wasn't an infant. He was practicing holding them. You just hold it close to your body. There you go, and just pet it. She's got one of those beautiful pelts that's two-tone.
Hold his cut up by his head. Mm, yeah. We're working to get you scratched. Yes, okay. <laughs> We're going to get me scratched. This looks like it's a little younger. Most of these are pretty pretty big. Um, let's see. Let me actually wash this for a minute. See all this fur that's sticking to the, you know, sticking. That's why you have to be careful when you're butchering that you don't get that hair. There's a joint in there somewhere. That's the joint. I heard it snap. It's in there somewhere. And you just want to do any of it, you know. I mean, that's one of the reasons that a lot of times the people that do raise rabbits have somebody else do the butcher. I mean, that's hard for anybody, but you've taken care of an animal for. See, there's that some joint thing going on there. I guess I didn't get that joint right. But in, in any case, there it is. <clears throat> I just don't know where the joint is. Botching the job, I'm sure. Butchers. I don't know what I'm doing. There you go. Anybody knows what they're doing can tell you that. Why don't you use one of those big knives? Because they're, yeah, they're okay. using them out there. So it's not that. It's just I just as soon cut them on the joint mm -hmm. rather than cut them so that the bones stick out. Because then they poke holes in the freezer bags. There's the joint. That's where I should be cutting it. See where the joint is there? There we go. Yeah. I'm really botching it. We're getting there. So there's two pieces there. And that's starting to bubble. Do you cut up chicken or anything? Um, Have you ever? Uh, no. <laughs> Are you a vegetarian? I just don't. I, I'm not vegetarian. I don't cook meat often or ever because I don't usually have a good source. But I'll eat it like if I'm at my parents' house, per se. Okay. Well, maybe sometime at your parents' house, um, find a good source, go buy a chicken, a yeah, whole chicken from it. a farmer. Basically, it's the same with a chicken as it is with anything else. Okay. You, you watch Julia Child, she'll show you and she'll be patting it and all uh -huh. kinds of stuff in her cooking shows. Very, very, very not good knives here. Helps to have sharp knives. But anyway, so that's the front leg. And we don't have bones. Try not to have sharp bones sticking out. So cut off all the legs, basically. Try to get it at the joint. joints in there somewhere. You can feel the joint. They even, I think they even have my sharpener out there. My shear, my kitchen shears are out there too. So I'm just using regular scissors. Ah, come on out of there. So I don't care if it has a little bit of meat from the side on it or whatever. What counts is it is a one piece of meat and that you don't have sharp bones sticking out there. So here is the side of the bunny and you can just take scissors and or, the, or kitchen shears and just cut those flaps right off and you can cook that like bacon or you can cut it up into little strips or pieces. You can make, make it a good Philly cheesesteak with that. Like, yeah, like, you know. it's kind of chewy though. Oh, okay. So you wanna, you kind of wanna. I'm thinking more like beef, uh, like uh, jerky, okay, you know, yeah. for hiking, uh -huh. or or when or when you're traveling and you don't want to stop at McDonald's. Exactly. <laughs> you got something in the glove compartment. 
you know. Rabbit jerky. Yeah. I just had my dehydrator die on me. So this is the prime rib. <laughs> the the filet mignon of a rabbit is the back. Okay. Look at the great big huge. Ooh, yeah. And you can debone the rabbit. You can you can make sausage with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, there's all kinds of recipes. So you just get to you get to a joint, kind of like when you're doing ribs. Well, I guess that's the spinal cord there. And I just that's the fat. There is some fat on this rabbit. This is sort of like the back of a chicken that's real bony. So a lot of times people use that for soup stock, this piece here. So you can also just cook rabbit like off the bone. I mean that'd be really good for like a stock. Okay, yeah. And this piece is probably the very best piece on the rabbit. That and the legs. This is called, I guess, the back strap. I guess that's what they call that. Just twisting it seems to work pretty good. So, done, 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 done. This, guy's a this is the older rabbit that's six months old. That, okay. And let me talk about the process. Let me put this on to fold that the process I use for um, cooking it and I put um, pe organic peanut oil in the base and I floured the rabbit with um, you know some organic flour mixtures with herbs in it whatever herbs and spices you like and then here is a piece of the meat which is right down at the bottom well it's layered I'm not going to get into that right now Oh, it's it's just breaded and and fried just like you would chicken um, and in in peanut oil and it's browned on both sides and taken out and then I put garlic and onions and browned them I steam the carrots and the potatoes on another in another pan and then after the onions and the garlic were um, finished uh, browning on the bottom then I put all the fried rabbit back in there and then put the carrots and the potatoes back on top and then put uh, a couple of table large tablespoons of sour cream and some whole milk with cream on top from a local farm about a half a cup or so in the, here and now I'm just reheating everything so it'll be hot for, for supper okay. for about 15 minutes before you serve it even more than young rabbit it makes it much oh. more tender here's our rabbit yeah, it's it's rabbit. Oh, um, look at that! It's, it's well, you already you already discussed carrots, carrot, potatoes, carrots, onions, sour cream in there, and you want to hand me your plate, Clint, and I'll I'm gonna give you one of these like you got some honey bread, bread. bread. Yeah, the filet mignon of the rabbit, some here. fresh salad greens there we from go. Sharon's garden. There uh, is can... that delicious piece of rabbit. Well, there's a couple of them. And let me put some potatoes and carrots on there, too. Chipper. Don't want to overload you, Clint. Don't want to make you fat. You won't uh, be able to shoe horses anymore. Fatter. Well, they just get mad. I'll tell that girl we'll do that tomorrow. Well, that might be a good <laughs> idea. After you eat this, you're going to go home and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Take you? Yeah.